So Qada Iyad says about the Ijaz al-Quran that this, there are many types of Ijaz in the Quran. And he says uh, there, 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 there are four major areas, but one thing is the the husnu ta'lif wal ti'amu karimihi wa fasahatuhu wa wujuhu ijazihi. It's the, the way that it's put together, the syntactical structures of, of the actual sentences. One of the things Abu Bakr al-Baqallani did in his book called I'jaz al-Quran is he took the Jahali poets, the great masters of poetry, and he showed how all of the Jahali poets have bad lines. No Jahali poet that did not have uh, what, what, what's called, uh, you know, shi'r rakik, just poorly constructed shi'r poetry. But he's, he challenged anyone to find a rhetorically weak verse in the Quran. In other words, a verse that could actually be articulated in a better way than it's articulated in the Quran with the Arabic language. That is something stunning. Now, I, because I'm an editor, um, and people that do editing, you know, I often read things and I think, mm, I would have said it differently or, you know, I mean, I'll edit while I'm reading things. Um, modern Arab writing is really hard for me to read because I've spent most of my life reading classical uh, writers who have just such a mastery of the language that it's hard to imagine that they could improve, you could improve on their language. So. That's the thing about the, the highest level of editing gets to the point where you just can't improve on it. It would be hard to improve on it. But in any book that's ever been written, you will find things that can be improved on. It doesn't matter. Shakespeare, anybody. Shakespeare has doggerel in his uh, plays. So Abu Bakr al-Baqallani shows that the Quran does not have any rhetorically weak uh, language. It's just, if you, if you take the science of rhetoric, which is a science, and analyze the Qur'an, you won't come any. So that's the, and then, ilti'amu kerimihi, the appropriate, one of the things about language, and this is why people enjoy listening to eloquent people, because when you hear really eloquent language, there's, it's more than just listening to the language uh, for meaning but you actually enjoy hearing the types of words that are put together when there's real mastery uh, of speaking. And so even the, the letters that are used, even the letters that are used have meaning. I'll give you some examples. In the Arabic language, the word khafif, khafif, and thaqil, Qaf is one of the heaviest words in the Quran. Qaf. Al Quran. Qaf yadullu ala al iltisaq. Yadullu ala. Qaf is usually used in words yadullu ala intiha or qata or qa'ar. You know, the, the depths of something, the severing of something. It's a very strong word, which is why qata'a is a qaf, qata'a, uh, qadhafa, uh, qattara. I mean, many, many examples of that. In the, so the word thaqil, tha is a heavy word. Tha, qa, thaqil, it's heavy. Then nulqi, alayka. Aulan, thaqilan. There's, it's actually heavy. So we will thrust upon you a weighty word. So even the choice of the letters in the Quran have uh, meanings. It's, 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 it's something uh, really amazing about the Quran. There are many, many examples of that in the Quran. Qutufuha daniya. Qutufuha qatafa. To pick something, to pull it off. Qa. Qutufuha daniya. Daniya, dunu is close. Qutufuha qataf is usually difficult. And then daniya. It's something that's close to you. Qutufuha daniya. Dunya. 
what's right, the closest thing to you, dunu. The uh, also the muqatta'at, muqatta'at, these mystical letters that if you look, somebody took all of the letters of the Quran that are mentioned uh, and uh, tried to assemble like a meaningful sentence from from these letters, the muqatta'at, Arif Lam Mim, Hamim Ain Sin Qaf, Arif Lam Mim Ra. And the, the only uh, sentence that, one of, this is one of the Mufassirin, the only sentence that he could come up with was Nasun Hakimun Qati'un Lahu Sir. Nasun Hakimun Qati'un Lahu Sir. That was the only, and that has all the muqatta'at. Nasun Hakimun Qati'un Lahu Sir. A wise Nas is Nasr Quran, a wise revelation. Qati'un, absolute, Lahu Sir. It has a secret. That was the only one he could come up with. So even the muqatta'at, if you look at the muqatta'at, they're very strange. Who could think of that? To start a book with letters that nobody knows what they mean. Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب, ذلك الكتاب للتعظيم. That book, ذلك الكتاب للتعظيم. لا ريب في. There's no doubt in it. That, that's the beginning of the book. Arif Lam Mim, you don't know what this means. So the first thing is, if you're coming to this book with some preconceptions about this book, with your own intellect, which is going to determine what you accept and what you reject, you're not going to get anything. Hudalil Muttaqeen. This is guidance for people that are already aware of some type of sense of duty towards their Lord. It's not going to benefit you. If you go to the book with your arrogance, if you go to the book thinking that you know everything, this book's not going to give you anything. Arif Lam Mim. Nobody knows what that means. All the Mufassirun say, Allahu Ta'ala A'lam. God knows what it means. One of the things that we do know is that letters in, in, English, in, in, in uh, modern linguistics, phonemes are meaningless. Phonemes. They're meaningless. We don't believe that. We believe that even letters have meaning. We just don't know what they mean. But we believe they have meaning. In other words, it's meaning all the way down. All the way down to the phonemes. And the first language, the, which was probably called Syriania, was a language of, of just phonemes put together. Like ba-ba, boo-boo, ga-ga, which is why babies speak in those, the, the initial, which is called doubling. In linguistics, this is the thing humans can do that animals can't do. We can put phonemes together and make words. And we do this out of 28, approximately. I mean, some languages have less than 28 and some have more, but there's not more than, I think it's like 45 or something sounds in any uh, given language. From these 28 letters, look what we can talk about. 28 letters, and look what we can articulate. We can talk about infinity, infinity. Humans can, can conceptualize things that are even beyond uh, our limited intellect's capacity to experience, and yet we can conceptualize them. And the highest of that is the greatest non-conceptualization, which is divinity, the fact that we can conceive of God. Of, of that which is out of time and space, but is the creator of time and space, that has no form, that is pure consciousness, that has all knowledge, omniscient, uh, omnivalent, uh, omnipotent, that we can conceive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is a miracle, and we conceive of God through language, because without language, we have no thought. We, without language, we have no thought. So the the... All of these things come together in the Qur'an. All of these extraordinary gifts of language. If you look, Ar-Rahman خلق الإنسان علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان 
الرحمن علم القرآن الرحمن the merciful imprinted the Quran علمه in Arabic the original uh, meaning of that was to imprint into sand or clay to leave a alama now the first writing was piercing into clay right the cuneiform writing and this this is what Allah has done with the human being we've imprinted in us this is what Chomsky understood that there is a universal grammar, that human beings, it is imprinted in us to learn language, that language is something that is intrinsic to our very humanity, that language is part of us, it's encoded in us. That, and this is why wherever you grow up, you will learn the language of those people. If they're Chinese and you're from uh, Brooklyn and you're raised in a Chinese family, you're going to speak Chinese. If you're a Chinese person and they raise you in Brooklyn, you're going to end up having a horrible American accent. No, I'm sorry. All the Brooklynese people, apologies. But the, th this is the reality, that we have the ability to learn language. It's imprinted. Allama al-Qur'an, khalaq al-insan, created the human being, allamahu al-bayan. Imprinted in the human being was the ability to understand language. Quran and insan. Quran and insan. And between b between between these two is is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's the one that gave the Quran to humanity. Revelation, the the the, re the receiver of the revelation, and then that receiver. This is communication. This is exactly how communication works. And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam articulated this extraordinary book, the fasaha of the book. The, the, the fact that our, the letters have been preserved to the degree that, that they've been preserved. We know exactly how the Qur'an is, is, is recited. We know how the Prophet ﷺ recited it. We know how many beats on every letter. How? This is the preservation of this book. No other book has this preservation. <laughs> we have sent down this book and we have taken upon ourselves to preserve the book. If you go now to that matwa in Medina, subhanallah, look at what the preservation of this Quran, every Quran that you pick up in that, uh, in that masjid, all those hundreds of thousands of masahif are exactly the same, with no mistakes. That this has been going on for centuries. Imam al-Qurtubi, about this verse, if you look in his tafsir, a Christian man came in Andrusia and he, he copied out a Bible and put mistakes in it on purpose. And he went to this Christian, and he was a calligrapher, master calligrapher, and it was a beautiful illuminated uh, Bible. And he showed the Christian and he said, could you read this and, and tell me if it's good? And this was the great scholar of the Christian. And he read it and he said, it's a beautiful gospel. And then he did the same with the Torah. He went to a Jew. It's beautiful. And he said, you didn't see anything wrong with it? No, it's beautiful. And then he did, wrote a mushaf and put mistakes in there. He took it to the, the, the Muslim scholar and he said, uh, could you read this and tell me what you think? And he said, we need to burn this. He said, why? He said, there's mistakes in it. And he knew. that Imam al-Qurtubi mentions this in his tafsir. He knew that it was preserved. No other religious book has been given the blessing of preservation that this book has been given. That is i'jaz, that the Qur'an says this book will be preserved. Tajweed, we know the makharij al-huruf. We know the 17 points of articulation. I know exactly where the qa emanates from. I know where the ha emanates from. I know where the lam emanates from. I know the attributes of these. We know what's ismat, we know what is mahmusa, we know the idlaq, we know the huruf, you know, the qalqala, we know these things. I know if you say al haqq that you have qalqala, we know the kubra and the sughra. Why? How did this all get preserved? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to preserve it. He promised his prophet this book would be preserved. This is a miracle alone, just the preservation of the Qur'an. And Muslims have really, unfortunately, a lot of them, they just don't understand uh, the incredible gift this community has been given in, the, in the, having a unified book, 
and the, and the, the preservation that the book has been given.